Okay, welcome for our third installment. Um, in Jewish law, this qualifies as a chazaka, which means that things are being established as a routine, which is an amazing accomplishment right there. We really appreciate uh, the feedback that we get, so please uh, let us know if you have any topics that you want us to cover. And uh, that's number one. Thank you very much, Rabbi Nagel. Unboxing Judaism is getting up there in the charts. Hopefully, we continue to grow and continue to expand the reach of Torah across the globe. So if you have any questions or comments, please email us at podcast at torchweb.org. And we look forward to your questions, your comments, your topics, your suggestions. So this week, we're talking about the idea of Hamidu Tamidim Harbe, which is... Uh, understood in, in multiple ways, but simply put, it means have many students, okay? And uh, I'd like to just start off by explaining, most people expect that to be a directive specifically to people of uh, a rabbinic nature, a teacher, have many students, um, and that's how most people understand it. But uh, really, what's very important for all of us to get is that whether you like it or not, we are always teaching. Not always good stuff. <laughs> Sometimes we aren't teaching the right things, but we are always teaching people in our environment. We're always in a position of a teacher. And that's why it's very important to understand that, that that's the fact, that's the case, whether you want to believe it or not, we influence others in our, that's in our world, our families, uh, our peers, our people we work with, and we are teaching them in, you know, sometimes we're teaching good things, sometimes we're not teaching good things. But the important lesson here is, is is that to increase the reach that we can, that we can to hopefully educate people in the right way, and the more people, the better. So that's the first first thought. I, I think what our sages are guiding us is to feel a sense of responsibility uh, for the wisdom that we have. Every single human being has something special to offer. And the question is, are we going to take what we know, the wisdom that we have, the discoveries that we make, or, and keep it to ourselves? Or are we going to overflow that wisdom to other people so it's not kept just for ourselves, but we take a sense of responsibility of sharing the wisdom with other people? And, you know, a little child learns things, and hopefully when they become older, they're able to convey those messages, they're able to convey and share those ideas. But the from when we grow from a little child all the way to becoming grown adults, we are constantly learning. We're learning new things from when we learn to eat, from when until we learn to walk, until we learn to run and ride our bicycles and play ball and et cetera, et cetera. All of the, the steps along the way are, are education. We're learning. We need to be learning people. And we need to share that wisdom. It's an amazing thing that the, the Torah tells us, that we should stand up for the elderly. And my rabbi once said, he says, from what age is that? From the age of 70. And the halacha says an amazing thing, that it's not only someone who's Jewish, a scholar over the age of 70, it's anybody over the age of 70. You're obligated to stand up. Why? Because 70 is the age of zikna. Zikna means an elderly-ness, an elderly, right? There's someone who's an elderly person. Our sages tell us that zikna, someone who reaches the age of 70, is Zekona. This person acquired wisdom. Wisdom of life, wisdom of experience, wisdom of, of, of an entire uh, you know, legacy of, of, of knowledge. And that is something we respect. We respect knowledge. And I believe what our sages are telling us here in, in acquiring or establishing many students is take that responsibility to share what you know. You know something, share something. Um, I have a few interesting uh, 
anecdotes. It's very funny. Um, still remember my grandfather, and uh, I used to go on road trips with him from New York to Florida, and we'd be traveling. And every time there was a time that we had to stop and, and, you know, it was like a red light or something, she always kept a space of t two cars length between the front of his car and the car in front of him. I'm like, why? You, know, you could go closer. Why do you have to leave so much space? He said, let me tell you, what if the car in front of me gets stuck? I'm not going to be able to get around. This way there's space. I can be able to get around. So I thought to myself, how many times did his experience teach him <laughs> that you're stuck right behind the, the guy in front of you and how frustrating that is and you can't get around? But that's life experience. That's what that is. And the if we are learning people, we can gain from others life experience. And that's itself a that's a tremendous and uh it's like we have we're standing on great men's shoulders. That's really what that is. So that's one point. The other thing uh the, about about sharing wisdom. It's, it's a fascinating Gemara that actually just came up in the Dafyomi. So the Gemara describes the animosity that the unlettered people have towards the rabbis. And, the, and, and, it's, uh, and the story goes about Rabbi Akiva. And Rabbi Akiva said for his first, first 40 years of his life, he was completely unlettered, so much so that he didn't even know how to read basic Aleph Beis. And he said, I used to say when I was at that stage, show me a scholar and I'll bite him like a donkey. So the students, you know, this is after Rabbi Akiva, the great Rabbi Akiva, he had 24,000 students. Students asked him, why do you say bite like a donkey? Bite like a dog. What does that mean? So he says, no, you don't understand. A donkey? bites and breaks the bones. Have such a strong bite, a donkey, that it'll break the bones of that which they're biting. What is the message here? The tremendous hatred was based on the fact that they felt that the, the Torah that is their legacy is not being shared with them. And, they, and that's what the Talmud tells us right afterwards. It says, it's like, you're, if you're studying Torah in their presence and they don't have access to that, it's like you're taking away their legacy. It's their inheritance. And they are not getting access to it. And that's where the animosity builds up from. And it was a, and it, the sad thing is that it was a two-way street. The rabbis hated them. They hated the rabbis. And all of it because, only one thing, because they weren't sharing the Torah that they had learned with them. If they felt that they were being given over the opportunity to learn, then they would themselves um, be so appreciative that they're being shared their legacy that they have. You know, I, I'm going to say something which is a little controversial. Uh, and that is that I feel, you know, what Torch does is we're an educational resource for the entire community. And now, thank God, with podcasts and videos to the entire globe, we're able to share Torah wisdom. We're able to share Torah knowledge with the world. But I always tell people that our responsibility, like, why is it? Is it my job? Is it my job? Let someone else do it. <laughs> Let you know. I was once in 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 the. Uh, I was in Jerusalem visiting the home of Rebbe Yashiv, the great super Jewish leader uh, of the generation. He passed away uh, several years ago, and uh, they. It's 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 not easy to get into his house. It's certainly not easy to spend private time with him. But you have to have an appointment. You have to know somebody. He has many gatekeepers. So I came to his house and I said, uh, I said, um, I would like to come in. I was there with my family. We had uh, just arrived to Israel for, uh, for a wedding. So I took my children first to go see Rebbe Yashif teaching Torah. I said, I want you to just see what a righteous, what a tzaddik is, what a righteous Jew is. Someone who's, he was then 96 years old, 97 years old. And he was teaching the dafyomi, he was teaching the Talmud like he was an 18-year-old. With energy, with, with excitement. It was just, it was amazing. It was just, just to see, just to sit by the window and see through how he was. He was well was into his 90s at this he time. Was, yeah, he, it was unbelievable. The passion was just incredible. So I get to his door after the class, you know, he, his whole entourage, and they close this, they close the doors. I knock on the door, and someone says to me, uh, "Do you have an appointment?" I'm like, "I don't have an appointment, but I'm I'm getting in." 
My wife says, you know, maybe it's not a good idea. I said, I'm, I'm getting in. So the, the gabai, the, the person in charge of the rabbi's schedule and his, and his, uh, his, his door, uh, he opens up the door. He says, how can I help you? I said, um, I, said I would like to come in to, to, to get a blessing from the rabbi. I said, my whole family, we all, we all came to get a blessing from the rabbi. So he says, do you have an appointment? I said to him, do you know who I am? <laughs> he says to me, he says, I, he says, no, I, I don't know who you are. I says, I said, I am doing his job. Mm-hmm. I said, I am in Houston, Texas, teaching Torah. It's not my responsibility. It's his responsibility. He's the leading Torah, Torah, Torah scholar of the generation. It's his job to go teach Torah in Houston, Texas. I said, I'm doing his job. And as such... I'm demanding to come inside and to get a blessing for my children. He said, in that case, you can come in. So he came in and our whole family, we got, we got a blessing. But the idea is like this, is that I feel that this responsibility to sit here in Houston, Texas and around the world uh, to go teach Torah to the Jewish people, whose responsibility is that? It's God's responsibility. Let him, let him take care of his own children. Let him take care of the Jewish people. So I feel like this. You know, over the past 200 years, there's been a... a, a a uh, reformation of many, many different movements, many different, uh, you know, stripes within Judaism, many different shapes and sizes. There once used to be, you were either a Shoma Shabbos Jew or you were not a Shoma Shabbos Jew. There was no, nothing in between. But there came a point where I think perhaps there was a lack of tolerance to questions. There was a lack of tolerance to people, uh, you know, inquiring, asking certain questions, and they were chased away in a way. They were chased away. And they said, you know what, we want to feel a connection to our Judaism. So they started an alternative. They started these alternatives. So yes, it's our responsibility to be patient and to go out and pursue and seek and take responsibility to teach the Torah, to teach it in a loving way, in a patient way, in an understandable way, so that we can bring our brethren to understand the beauty of our Torah, to share it, right? You have Torah. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not a big scholar. I'm not like you, Rabbi Nagel. I'm, I'm not. I haven't finished the Talmud. I haven't. I don't know that much Torah. But whatever I do know, there's an obligation that the Mishnah uh, demands of us. Amidu talmidim harba. Go out and share whatever you do know. Go and t- teach it. Go be patient. Go show the beauty of the Torah. Go. You know, of, of, by the way, I don't only think. That in Torah we need to have uh, a teacher or a mentor or, or share the wisdom that we have. In every area of life, whether it be education, whether it be about marriage, whether it be about cars or finances, have someone who you seek counsel, someone who you seek their advice um, and, 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 and pursue that wisdom. Now, here the Mishnah is pointing out specifically that as an individual, we all need to teach what we have. We need to take that responsibility, feel the obligation towards another person because someone else can benefit from your wisdom. Someone else can benefit. And that's, that's I think, the, 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 the charge that our sages are, are, are imploring upon us. Share what it is that you have. I just... Uh... I have a few uh, interesting um, insights into this uh, idea of, of uh, sharing sharing what we know. It's in, it's very interesting. One of the no, there's normally in ba- pretty much most areas of life, what I give to you, I am basically taking away from myself and handing it over. So if I'm giving charity, for instance. So that dollar that was in my pocket is now by you, and I don't. Long, I no longer have it. In wisdom, and in the area of informa- of knowledge, of understanding, it's actually the opposite. In the process of me giving that over, not only are you gaining the knowledge, but I gain even more knowledge by just giving it over. One of the very famous statements from one of the great rabbis, Rav Chaim Soloveitchik, from the few generations ago, actually, he said that if you cannot explain it to someone else, then you're lacking in your understanding. And that's exactly the process 
of clarifying something in a way that you're able to give it over, that gives you the knowledge in a much deeper and a much richer way. And by, ha- by being able to break it down that another person can understand, that clarifies it to you in a, such a better way yourself. So not only, so by giving, you are gaining that much more. As the famous Rav, Yo- Rav Yochanan Ben Zaka, I believe, said, Mi talmida yoser mikulam. I gained the most from my students. So, in fact, this is the one area, really, that the giving is, in fact, getting that much more. Right. It, the, it, yeah. the, the, the parable they say for that is like a candle. A candle, if I eat it, the dollar, I give you a dollar so you have it and I don't. But a candle, if I have my candle lit and I light your candle, now we both have it. Right. right? It's, it says, ner mitzvah v'torah or, right? That the, the, the mitzvah is can be multiplied. You know, many people think, it's an amazing idea, that people think that, you know, if I help, if I if I do the mitzvah, then then I get the reward. But what's if it, what's if I tell someone to do the mitzvah? I inspire someone to give charity. I inspire someone to 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 assist someone. So then they get the mitzvah. You both get the mitzvah. Right. It increases. It, it increases. It multiplies. Right. It's like I take the candle. I light your candle. Now we both have a candle. Right. That mitzvah gets multiplied, and people think that there's a finite amount of reward that the Almighty has to give out. But it's not the way it works. There's an infinite amount of reward, and it just gets multiplied. So if, if, if we're able to inspire a person, and that person inspires, and that person inspires, and that person inspires, that all goes onto the account that we built for ourselves. Right? All of those, all of those merits, all of those good deeds come back to, to you. So potentially, you know, you think of uh, your dafyami, for example. Your dafyami, you give a you give a dafyami here in Houston, Texas, right? And it goes on to the internet. And the people, they listen to it on, on, on podcast. You know, it could be, it will be, right? After 120 years, Rabbi Yaakov Nagel comes in front of the heavenly courts and they open up, the, they pull out the red carpet and they, they're like, do you know? You're like, me? What did I do? I, I gave a dafyom in Houston. No, you have no idea. There are people in Germany and people in Belgium and people in Australia. It is really scary. It is really scary to see. They all learned your Torah that you taught in Houston, Texas, but you took the initiative to share it with the world. It's really, it, it's it, every time I, uh, to encourage myself, I go on to the uh, analytics of the podcast carrier and I'm blown away from people who somehow find the class. They listen to it. Right now where I think I'm at 48,000 people who've actually sat down and listened to a class. Okay, over. I've been doing it for a number of years, not even that long, but that's all, the number is staggering. And where they are, these are people who had obviously no access. I think it was the first time I saw Saudi Arabia on the list. I'm like, Saudi Arabia? Who's listening to this class in Saudi Arabia? I have no idea. But that's you put it out there, and that's the beauty of it, it especially with, that's one of the, for sure, the things that will help bring Mashiach is the ability to convey Torah on such a global level that's existing now that I don't, never existed in history. So You know, my podcast is very popular in the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but if you're watching in the Netherlands, please send us a note. We'd like to know how you found our podcast. <laughs> but in the Netherlands, I mean, it's it's of the top four. It's Israel, it, it, United States, Israel, Canada, and the Netherlands. No idea. I don't know how, but you know what? That's the idea. Hamidu Talmidim Harbe is spread, spread out the Torah. I think it's an amazing thing, just to, as a general perspective of what the Torah is. The Torah is the manual for life. You know, when you buy a cup, you buy a cup, you buy a microphone, you buy, you buy a table. It comes with instructions. Anyone who you go to IKEA, you know, anything, everything any, you buy in any store, you buy a fan, you buy a light bulb, it comes with instructions. A baby is born, there's no instructions. How do I live life? How do I raise the child? How do I feed the child? No instructions. That's why we give extra respect, by the way, for the oldest child, because they were the guinea pig, of course. <laughs> we learned how to be parents on them. That's right. <laughs> okay. That's right. <laughs> so the, the, it, it's an amazing thing that there is a manual, and the manual is called the Torah. The manual 
this Torah is the gift that God gave the Jewish people. Here you go. This will tell you how to live life. Everything from birth to death. From cradle to everything, grave, everything, everything, in between. You need, everything you need to know, everything in between, whether it's science, whether it's medicine, whether it's fashion, everything is in the Torah, everything. And now, us as the Jewish people, our obligation is to share that wisdom with the world, right? It's not to hold it for ourselves. If you look at American law or any nation's laws, they're all based on the, on the principles of the Torah, like you have, uh, you have in in the courthouses, they have the Ten Commandments. Well, Ten Commandments, the Jewish Ten Commandments from the Torah, right? Yes, because we are supposed to be a light to the nations. That's our obligation is to be a light to the nations, and and it's an it's an amazing responsibility that the Mishnah charges us here. Go out and share your wisdom. You have something, you know something, share it. Go tell it to someone. Now there's a. A whole different angle that I just uh, feel very passionate about. Um, and that's based on the wording. The wording is Hamidu Talmidim Harbe. Now, if you're actually trying to understand the grammar, Hamidu means to stand up, Talmidim means students, and Harbe means much. The question is most people, I mean, we, it should have said Hamidu Harbe Talmidim. Stand up many Talmidim. That's what been the way it should have said it. But it didn't say it that way. It said, Hamidu Talmidim, stand up students, Harbe, much. Which is really understanding the importance of a single student that you stand them up as many times as it takes to get them to be standing. And that means that there's no limit even to one student that you're sharing your wisdom to to develop that person and let them grow their own wings. And that's what people need to realize is that it's, there's no limit, just like there's, you want to have as many students as you can have, there's no limit to how much that student can be your student, can grow. And that's clearly, that's definitely also part of what we need to think about when giving over. Someone has a question or a difficulty and they can't get it. This is our. This is something that we really need to think about as well. Yes, the the quality of the student to really invest that time in the student uh, to make them. You know, it's like when I was in yeshiva, my rabbi would uh, he would give us what's called mara mekomos, right? Which is a, he would give us source source sheets. And we would have to, he would give us sources, look in this Talmud and look at this uh, Rambam and this, all of the different sources that he would bring. And then the class would be bringing it all together. And, I, I, you know, I, to me, I was always wondering when I was in Yeshiva, like, why do we need this? Why, why don't we just learn it, understand it? And, uh, you know, we'll hear, we'll hear the, the class. To... So my rabbi was explaining to us then. He says, my job is not to teach you the Talmud. My job is to teach you how to think like the Talmud. You have to know, you know, it's like, why can't we just download a file which is called Torah? Download the file and finish. No, 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 it's not the idea of just performing it. It's using our, our mind to start thinking like God. You walk into the, into the study halls of, of the great Mir Yeshiva in Jerusalem, right? over 9,000 students sitting and learning Torah all day. And you wonder, what are they just sitting, look... Look at the halacha, you'll know what to do. No, no, no. The idea is we don't just want to know what to do. We want to know how to think godly. So that when we're not sitting in front of our, 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 our books, when we're not sitting in front of the Torah scroll, right? We should know how to think like a godly person. And that's what the Torah is about. The Torah is about becoming a person that is completely embodies that Torah. And I think it's, it's like you, you're saying, is to establish that student and build them up, build up that student. You know, I, I can bet, Rabbi Nagel, that your uh, favorite rabbi was the rabbi who invested the most in you. That's how it goes. Right? The, right? And my, my favorite rabbi was the same. You know, he spent time and he reviewed with me. He says, how's it going? And he would, and like you're saying, to build them up, to build them up, to build them up, not to knock them down, not to tell them what they don't know, not to tell them how they're a loser, not to tell them how they, they can't, but rather those who build and encourage. I think it's a beautiful idea. Very important. 
Um, listen, uh, the thing about building uh, building up students is you have to. It, the, the idea, the word used is interesting. Is ha'amidu, to have them stand. It's an unusual term. You could have said teach. That's not the word used. Ha'amidu talmidim harbe. It means to stand them up. It means to give them that independence, that there's skills that you're teaching. And those skills can be brought to bear that they can stand on their own two feet and they can walk on their own. There's a famous uh, uh, pasuk that is considered the parable of, of how you give over Torah. And Parsha's Ba'aloscha, when it talks about lighting the menorah. So it doesn't say lehadlik, which means to light. It says baha'aloscha, es haneros. When the fire mm-hmm. goes up, when the element, when you see the fire going up on the wick, which means that you hold, the, it's an obligation to hold the candle there where, where that you're lighting from till it rises on its own. And that's part of what's the, being conveyed here that they should be able to, the student should be able to be independent. They shouldn't need to rely on the art scroll the whole life, <laughs> okay? They should learn how to be able to be independent in the Torah. Nothing, to, I'm not trying to knock anything. But the idea is to develop themselves to a level where they can be independent because that's what it ensures that it can be given over. Right, to, to, to bring them up that, you know, you don't want to, to, a coach's job is to get the player to be at a point where they are good enough on their own, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, they, they, we may need we need to have which the the the, 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 the Mishnah tells us a little further down that we need a seil harav. You always have to have a rabbi. My grandfather was in his eighties, and I asked him. I said, "Saba, who's your rabbi?" And he said, to "Rabbi Yonas and David. May he live and be well." And Rabbi Yonas and David is a good 15, 20 years younger than my grandfather. So I said to him, "I don't understand." I mean, he's 15, 20 years younger than you. She so says, no, no, no. He taught me my Aleph base. Right? <laughs> now, I believe that that's referring to the Aleph base, which is the, the secrets of, of Kabbalah, is all based in, in, in the letters of the Aleph bet. But, and which is what he would learn with him on a regular basis. But the idea is that even when you're 80, 90 years old, you still have someone that you go to, that you that you humble yourself in front of, that you go and seek their wisdom because everybody has something to contribute. It, it, the, you know, they say about the great sages, they would go to children and get critique from children. Why? Because it's, it's glot, it's clean, it's pure. Right? Children see something and they say, they see hypocrisy or they'll say it. They, they, they don't, there's no, it's an amazing thing. They would even go to learn from someone who's so much younger than them. I have an interesting story. Many years ago, before I moved to Houston, I met with my, uh, my Rosh Yeshiva, and uh, he knew that I was planning on this move, and he and this and he told me something that stuck that sticks with me to this very day. He said, "When you're going to go to Torch to be to to teach Torah, you'll be teaching primarily to working people, adults who have never had." Um, access when they were younger to to Torah study. He said, I want you to know that you have a major advantage over me, who's a Rosh Hashiva of students who are studying from their from youth and they come to my to my classes. And the difference is this. He says a student in the yeshiva, they are naturally looking to accept and hear what the teacher is saying. To, to just want to, be, want to believe it. Even if there's a question on it, they're trying to understand it, to, believe, to, to just accept it and absorb it. When, by, when it comes to a, a bala bias, which is just a regular, you know, working man who had no exposure, if it doesn't make sense, he's going to ask, but I don't understand. And he said, that's something that you'll have to explain. And that's something that will clarify it for you. So you're given here a, such a tremendous opportunity that we're, they're, they're not going to just accept whatever you tell them. They're going to ask. They're going to say, but I don't get it. And then you're going to have to clarify it. And then it'll be clarified for them and for you. And that's 
I took this to heart because this really is my experience here for the, since I'm here, 1998, you believe that. Um, uh, 22 years, I'm like that. I can't even, I can't even think about it. Right. So it, 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 it really is amazing. I want to just add another angle to the same three words that you said, Hamidu Talmidim Harbe. And I think the is, you know, I once asked my rabbi, may he live and be well, Rabbi Yitzchuk Berkowitz, I asked him, is it okay that I teach classes on topics that I want to learn? Meaning, can I utilize the opportunity of my teaching for me to learn? He says, of course. He says, I, d- I did that all the time. And he said that when he was in, uh, at that time, he was not in Eish Torah. Now he's back again in, in, in Eish Torah. He's at the helm of the Rosh Hashiva of the great, great institution right off the Kotel Square uh, at, uh, in Jerusalem. And he, uh, he said that when he wanted to learn, for example, the laws of mikvos, of, of the ritual bath, so he put up a sign saying on Tuesday at 3 o'clock, I'm giving a, a class on it. And he had uh, six days to prepare, right? <laughs> because he's utilized the, uh, utilizing the opportunity of teaching Torah to others for himself to learn and to obligate himself to know. And I've done it many times where I would, I would introduce a, a, a series because this is a series I wanted to work on. I remember particularly I wanted to work on, on the Shema. The, the Shema is the mission statement of the Jewish people. It's something that should be recited with intention, with proper focus every single day, three times a day. And I felt like I needed to strengthen myself. So I announced we're doing a five-part series on the Shema. And that obligated me that each week before class, I needed to look at it and, and, and inquire and read all of the sources and look at all the commentaries to understand so that when I teach it, I hopefully know it well enough, but I don't only say it as words, but rather I use it to influence myself to for it to become part of who I am. And that way it can actually have an impact, hopefully, uh, to the students. So I think Hamidu Talmidim Harbe is that when you establish your Torah study and you're sharing it with your students, it'll be marba to you. You'll grow. You'll be inspired. It shouldn't be that you're, our sages teach us that the Torah we teach shouldn't be like you have a cup and you pour out of the cup to your students, right? It should not be like that. But rather, you should keep on filling into the cup and it overflows to the students. And that, I, I believe, is our, our obligation as, uh, not only as rabbis, I think as parents, to our children, I think as uh, as members of a community, whether we're in a synagogue, whether we're in, in in any 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 sphere that we're in, to find a way to influence people, to be an influencer, in a way that that we you know it's there's today there's there's something called um, presumers. You know what a presumer is? It's an interesting thing. You see, it used to be before we had internet and, and Facebook and, and Twitter and, and all of these other social media platforms that we were consumers. So the producers were NBC and ABC and CNN and Fox News and all of these other networks. They were the producers of news and we were the consumers. But today we're also the producers because people have their phones and they go on social media and they do a Facebook live video or, you know, or, you know, they use all these uh, platforms to produce the news as well. So we're presumers, we're producers and consumers Consumers at the same time. And and the idea is, is that now it's it's almost in a way it it levels the playing field. But the idea here that the Mishnah is telling us is that we need to be producers of content, of Torah, of, of understanding. And we also need, that will also make us into a, cons- a better consumer because we clarify the things that we're, we're uncertain about. So if it's someone studying the Chumash and they're learning through each parsha, right? To look, when we give a class on that parsha, we gain a whole new clarity because we have to understand it well before we teach it. So in, the, in, in, in essence, what happens is that the more we teach, the more we're actually learning. That's so true. I just want to share a few interesting points that I that I that I realized. Many people, one of the reasons when you ask them is that you know, like, why don't you give over? And you say, oh, I'm, that's for great rabbis. That's for the big scholars. I'm not cut out. Who am I? They they have this humility, and I just want to people to know is that you don't need to be the one who knows everything. 
And one of the greatest things that you can actually give over is the questions that you have. That itself is tremendous teaching because you're opening up people to new ideas, to, to a way to look at things. So even if you don't have clarity, you're giving over. I always felt that the greatest thing that I got from my teacher was not the answers to the questions, but the questions themselves. Because the right question opens up the topic to let you think deeper about something. And that's a very important thing. So if you're a thinking person, then you have what to share already. And I like you know, and another idea that, you know, that to, speaking to these people who have this humility that they're not fit for it, they're not, they're not worthy to give over, it really isn't, doesn't work that way. All you need to be is one day ahead. <laughs> okay. And that's the, and that's what, and that's really what you're saying. Um, I still remember how um, um, I come from a family of professors. I have two brothers that are professors. My father's a professor. It runs in the family. I'm not, I've am not. never been a professor, but I do basically the same thing, giving over what I study, what I learn. And um, I remember my brother was taking on a class that he had no information. He says, yeah, but all I need is to be one day ahead of my students. One day. And the truth is, in my Dafyomi share, I'm not prepared days ahead. I just study that one day ahead to be ready for the class that I'm about to give. And, uh, and you know, it's actually, in a way, I think healthier because it's fresh for you. It's you're, you, you just learned it. There's that excitement. There's that enthusiasm. And then you can share it over. And that's, uh, I think, one of the... And I encourage everybody, you know, the more you learn and get inspired that you're able to share to others, it just grows exponentially. So that's the idea. That's the pitch anyway. Yeah. So I, I want to just encourage all of our viewers and listeners. You know, you may be any place out in the Netherlands. <laughs> you might be anywhere. And you may say, me, I don't know, but I listen to a podcast. I watch a video. I want you to know something. Get a group of people together. Bring them to your home if you can. I know it's COVID, so you got to be careful. But get a group of people, a group of friends together and just ask the questions. Ask the questions. What are the questions we have about our Judaism? What are the questions we have about the stories we may have heard about the, in the Torah or of, of our exodus from Egypt, from Pesach? Start asking those questions. You're welcome to reach out to us at podca podcast at, at torchweb.org. We'll be happy. I'm happy to. I'm sure Rabbi Nagel will join me uh, in, in, in welcoming your questions. We'll be happy to do a, a Zoom class with your group. But don't feel like you're isolated and you're out in the middle of no place and I have nobody to ask. I have no, I have no one to learn with. Get your group of friends together. And start reading a book together, reading a Jewish book together, whether, whether it be, uh, you know, the, the, the weekly Torah portion, whether it be a book on, on, of inspiration, read together, learn together. The, and you become a master of incredible wisdom and you're influencing people to grow and to connect on a whole higher, le a higher level. And it's, it's really an important responsibility that the Mishnah is charging us with. Yes, absolutely. So, okay. Thank you very much, my dear friends. We appreciate you joining us. And again, from Rabbi Nagel and myself, so long and shalom from Texas. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.